This is a video to try and prove what I've always felt that the early boutiques have an unacceptable amount of latency. To try and prove this, I've set it up in as simple a way as possible. So there's no USB involved, which is one of the things that the excuses that people are giving for the latency. I was never convinced. So there's no USB attachment at all. It's getting its power from batteries, which is one of the solutions people have proposed. It's also getting its MIDI, of course, via a MIDI cable, a brand new MIDI cable uh, going into the MIDI in, and it's receiving simple notes from a uh, MPC Live, which is a standalone sequencer. So if I trigger some MIDI here, you can hear, you can hear that's a sort of short, sharp, percussive sound. And the audio is traveling out of the main audio output, which is a stereo mini jack cable. And that's going into a small Mackie mixer and on out of the headphone output into the built-in input of an old MacBook of mine. The reason I've done it on an old MacBook is because I don't want people saying that my interface is, is adding any problems. Okay, so for comparison, I have set up in a similar way as possible, a Waldorf Rocket, which is another digital synth. Uh, it does have an analog filter, but the oscillators and everything else are digital. Unfortunately, this can't run on batteries. Um, so, I have had to plug it in via USB purely for power reasons. As you can see, that's only going to a, a power supply. It too is getting its MIDI via an identical cable bought at the same time. And the audio is going down a standard mono jack cable. If I switch tracks here, you'll hear that I've made a very similar sound, I hope, on the rocket to the one on the JU. Okay, so I have drawn in on a grid some MIDI for both of those on the MPC Live. Let me just scroll down. Oops, sorry, I'm on the wrong. There we go. So you can see perfectly quantized like a metronome, one, two, three, four in the bar. And I've got, that's track one, which is the rocket. And then track two. Oh, track two, there we go. I have identical for the DJU. So what I'm, all I need to do now is pan them left and right. So the rocket gets panned over to the left. The Jupiter, sorry, the Juno, the JU gets panned over to, sorry, the right. So left and right respectively. That makes it easier for us to see visually on the waveforms. The top will be the rocket and the bottom would be the JU. And then all I have to do is hit play. Now it may be that you heard some latency there. I certainly did. It may be that you did or you didn't. One of the problems is I think people, some people are more sensitive to latency than others. Uh, but if I stop that and I zoom in, it will become pretty apparent before too much of a level of zoom that the top one, the rocket, is significantly earlier than the bottom one, the JU. And actually, if we dive in a bit further onto the file at the bottom, turn the warp off actually to do that, and zoom in, we can try and find out how much that is. Let's just make the waveform a little bit bigger. 
Now, you'll see that down the bottom here, this is, it's quite hard to see, it's seconds and milliseconds. And you'll see that the difference from here, 353,820 up to 353,835, shows that there's 15 milliseconds or so of latency on the JU in comparison to the Waldorf rocket. Even though the Waldorf rocket is being powered via USB, and the JU isn't. Now that would be in keeping with my own findings before. Whenever I've used the JU in any projects, I've always had to put a 15 millisecond pre-delay on any MIDI or audio, depending on the situation, to try and get it to fall in time with everything else. So hopefully, that proves that the J, my JU here isn't really doing its job properly in terms of timing. Now, just in case you're thinking, well, maybe I've just got a faulty JU. Firstly, I have done this proposed uh, factory reset. I've done that a couple of times because there's a rumour going around that that will cure it. It hasn't. It's exactly the same as it's always been. And just in case you think I've got a faulty unit, over here, I have a JP, and I'm going to now set up exactly the same with a JP. Okay, identical setup in every way, except now we have the JP. The JP was purchased a good few months after the JU, so it's not part of the same batch. The JU I had on pre-order and got the day it came out. The JP I got some months later. Um, got a very similar sound set up. And I'll pan them left and right again. Identical sound that we had before on the rocket. Let's go. Okay, let's stop that. Let's stop that too. Let's turn the warp off. Let's zoom in. And here we can see exactly the same problem. And if we have a look in terms of milliseconds, that one starts on the top, that's the rocket, starts at four, uh, 350 milliseconds. And the JP starts at 365. So again, pretty much identical latency, 15 milliseconds on two of the first generation boutiques, two different models, both had factory resets, both cutting out as many factors as possible, really as, as um, unfussy a setup as it's possible to get. And that proves that they have 15 second, sorry, 15 milliseconds of latency, which is certainly audible and on percussive rhythmic sounds is not really usable. Um, certainly in a live context. I'd like to invite any owners of either of these two boutiques, the JP or the JU, to prove me wrong by setting up in exactly the same way. It doesn't have to be an MPC, of course, but setting up in the same way and showing that I just happen to have a bit of bad luck in having two identically faulty units and that yours is fine. But until you can prove it, you'll forgive me for just thinking it of being hearsay because I think I've done that as scientifically as I can and it's pretty conclusive this end.